I could get your attention for starting the next session. We're on uh, cyber in action. Um, had a, a very, very nice beginning session. Uh, lots of uh, interesting questions uh, from Mike Post and uh, some hard problems. Uh, we get started. Get started. It's good to see a lot of dynamic conversations. Uh, but we're back in action. Mm. Oh, really? Hello? No? OK, I'll, I'll uh, try to match with the, the frequency and the uh, volume of Mike's voice, uh, Tim's voice, I think. That's, uh, that's even louder. Uh, can you hear me now from that side? All right. Uh, so we have an uh, interesting set of demos and tutorials for this uh, CyberJS in Action session. As I mentioned in my opening talk, oh, I cannot get this right. Uh, so this brings back to the context I was referring to when we speak to this systems of systems, right? As CyberJS, as uh, distributed systems and uh, integration knowledge synthesis and uh, you saw these terms and then of course is this uh, cloudy view of cyber GIS we yet to uh, work hard to crystallize. And uh, this backs for the question of cyber GIS for what and whom. And I hope our cyber GIS in action session mostly delivered tutorials and uh, demos from the project members will help shed some light into this, this question. But uh, first of all, given that the context of cyber GIS, we see opportunities from high-end computational strategies. Uh, traditionally, uh, GIS, based on history, has not gone into the high-end computational environments. And there are definitely problems such as the ones from the big data world, the big, big computation world requires such capabilities. So in the CyberGS project, we have been pushing the envelope in that direction to have this, what we call CyberGS toolkit established that's going to the deep uh, dimension into high-end computational environment and cyber infrastructure resources. As you heard from Mike, uh, five million users notion, and we also have this broad dimension that is uh, what we say in the project, this uh, long tail science, right? There are a lot of scientists, users, who are not necessarily possessing the technical insights to work with GIS, let alone cyber GIS. And of course, in the middle, we have a spectrum. Uh, and this should be a continuum. It's not easy to be defined as certain categories. And from, oops the CyberGS software environment perspective, this is what we label as middleware. So it's the glue bridging between the high-end computing uh, aspects and the broader dimension, which is the, the long tail scientific use. So as you would hear from our tutorials and demos, we're going to strike into these three uh, aspects and show you some examples and experiences gained from the project. It turns out to be complicated in order to pulling the three uh, dimensions together, the toolkit, middleware, and the gateway. And because you see the software tools are moving into open space, moving into open ecosystem. And how do you have the individual software tools ready to be integrated with the right interfaces and the granularities and the functionalities? So we are in the project assembling a set of representative software tools, we study how these tools are interacting with each other and coming together for useful and novel uh, capabilities. And we recognize CyberGS as any other software tools. It has a life cycle, right? To make software usable, it actually takes software into a life cycle. And it's multi-level. It requires different strategies for the software coming to being, and this life cycle actually is iterative. It's not a single life cycle. And of course, from scientific problem solving perspective, 
we have the desirable characteristics of CyberGIS being high performance, scalable to big data, large problems, and the utilities are distributed coming from different software tools, used to be developed as a standalone software tools, now they need to evolve into the open ecosystem, and also as earlier discussed, uh, collaborative uh, problem solving requires uh, community building and the synthesis of knowledge from different areas. This is not a vision test, but I'll leave this uh, to <laughs> you. Uh, and this is a more detailed process, uh, corresponding back to that high level uh, diagram I showed you, uh, but uh, I'm not gonna uh, steal thunder from the, the folks who are working hard on the, the demos and the tutorials, uh, but you will get an opportunity to demystify the workflow involved uh, in our software environment to pull different software tools and elements together to solve scientific problems and you might uh, be able to resonate with your own problems and see further potential after this exercise. So with that, um, I'm gonna transition to the first tutorial slash demo. Uh, Yan will be leading uh, and, uh, and this uh,